All right. So, all right. The word of scripture. Welcome, my world. A place where the natural eyes can't see, where your physical bodies can't be, where the last is first, the first is last, the end is told from the beginning, when it appears as though one is losing. Are actually one where trumpets are depicted as voices and the persecuted right just don't complain but actually rejoices here swords are likened to the word and the demons of birth the dead are yet alive and the living are actually dead blood and flesh are even depicted as wine and bread it's a place wherein the humble are depicted as poor and the poor one becomes they're later found to be that much richer i'm speaking of no other place than the gospel world of scripture so please turn off your phones perk up your ears and get ready to listen for the rock hopper dash about to begin teaching. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. So we're continuing on with our creation story series entitled In the Beginning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. So last week we started um, a recap. Well, actually, a couple weeks ago we started a recap. And so we've been doing the recap. So the first week we got through. Hallelujah. First, first week we got through um, days one through three. Last week we did, we got through day four. And we're going to see how far we get today. So we're going to pick it up with day number five. All right. Now, just, um, just a word of warning. You know, um, you may want to pull out your rubber boots for this one and make it a little deep here there and you know i'm not making no promises you know um so yeah if it's something that you don't quite get put it on the shelf you know say la think about it um i'm gonna tell you up front it's a lot in here it's a lot in here and i am actually you know or actually i should say yah is actually doing a whole lot you know, it's a, it's, it's a lot in here. So I would suggest you just you go back and watch it again a second or maybe even a third time. Because, yeah. yeah. All right. So let's jump right in. Day five. It's all about the creation of the sea creatures and the winged fowl. You know, and this is a beautiful picture by Michael Duda and you know depicting the uh, day five the marine life and the winged fowl all right so right now we're just going to talk about the bottom half the marine life amen, amen. now marine life equals info all right on day four of one's spiritual development, Elohim takes up residence within one's heaven, that is within the expanse of their mind, in a form that is likened unto the sun, the moon, and the stars. And remember, the sun spoke to love, the moon, the faith, the stars, the hope, you know. And the marine life of day five is a picture of Yah or Satan influencing us to utilize the information and experiences that fill our seas, that is our memory, for the glory of Yah or Satan. I put it or Satan because you can be doing either one. One of them's happening, you know, and because this is about your spiritual development, you know, I put Yah, you know, but usually, you know, it's the other guy. Hmm. You know, you, you have, Yah's part has to be, you know, somewhat intentional um, on the most part. Okay, when we act upon information and experiences in a way that accomplishes either Yah's or Satan's will, way, and purposes, it is then mobilized. Hence, it becomes a type of clean or unclean fish. You know, the difference between the info that make up the marine life and the info that make up our seas or memory is the utilization of the info. When information is acted upon, it is then in turn mobilized. Hence, it is given life. Yet the resulting clean or unclean um, act or life is dependent upon the original info from which it stemmed. Even as fish or marine life are dependent upon the water from which they stem. 
For without the original info, the resulting afterlife would never have occurred. And without water, marine life could never have come forth. Anybody still with me? Yes. All right, so to further exemplify this concept, let us consider a piece of current info that I believe is within everyone's seed or memory. All right, here we go. This is a publication by Marvel Comics. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's called The Transformers. You know, in this particular issue says surrender. You know, Marvel means to to be surprised or greatly surprised, you know, and people were surprised, you know, Transformer fans were surprised all over when they came out with this series, you know, and it was a big hit for them, you know, and like I said, this particular, this particular um, episode or um, issue was, was entitled Surrender. You know, and that's kind of what they want you to do. You know, so now remember, I said we're going to consider a piece of current info that I believe is within everyone's see or memory. And this current info that I'm speaking about are the Transformers. And this is how it looked in the comic book, you know, um, when they first came out. But this is kind of how they look now today, you know, with the, um, you know, in the movies, I mean, you know, so we still have the Transformers, you know, now these Transformers, it's important to know that essentially they're machines, you know, they're Transformers, they, they're something that, that appear dead, but then come to life. They appear dead, but then they transform into something that looks like it's living mm -hmm. you know and and this is this is what these transformers do so they started out here the first transformer was called alpha you know but then the second transformers you know as they came out with um different ones they began to transform and transform from alpha to this one to this one to this one and now here we are it's done this transformer is now called this. Again, a transformer is something that's dead, but then it transforms to a type of thing that has life. You know, it appears as if it has life. It, some, um, you know, but essentially it's a machine and machines are dead, you know, and they, they don't have life, you know, but it appears as if it has life, I mean, you know. So when information is acted upon, so such as the information of the Transformers, when it's acted upon, it is in turn mobilized. Mm -hmm. And it is this mobility, which is being depicted as life during the fifth day. Yet this mobilized info or action taken, um, taken um, life, rather clean or unclean, is dependent upon the original info, the act or the life um, in which the act or life stem from. Even as fish or marine life are dependent upon water for life. You know, so you can't have the mobility of, of, um, of info without the info, right? right? So you can't have life that stem from the info without the info. And so it's one that's is dependent upon the other. Amen? Amen. You know, so uh, you have to you have to have the info in order for the fish to come come forth. You know, and even as you have to have water in order for the fish to come forth. So that said, whether or not it's clean or unclean fish or marine life that I brought forth is dependent upon uh, one's perception of the info. And one's perception is dependent upon the quality of one's life. You know, so what I want you to understand is, you know, you have to first start off with some, some info, you know, and when you start off with the info, 
you begin, you act on it. When you act on it, it becomes a type of life, a type of living thing. You know, this is what's being depicted as fish, you know, fish or marine life, you know, um, because when you act upon it, you mobilize it, and that mobility is, is a type of life, mm. you know, and so the body will actually be the action, you know, so this is how the marine life come forth, and it's dependent upon the info, just as the fish are dependent upon the water, you know, and so how one acts upon the info is dependent upon their perception of the info. And this is a really important point. You know, for the clean or unclean fish or marine life are brought forth is dependent upon one's perception of the info. And one's perception of the info is dependent upon the quality of, of one's life. How you see something is gonna depend on how the light hits it. I mean, you know, if, if you're in the dark, you're not going to see very well. And if you are in light, you know, which may seem as though it's bright light to you, but that may only be because you've never really been in bright light, you know. You know, so it depends on the quality of one's light. You know, because the quality of one's light is going to determine how well you see what's before you. If there's poor lighting, then you're going to have a poor perception of it. Because you're not going to be able to see all the details. Better quality of light is going to show you all the details. I mean, so let's return to the former analogy, whereas the transformers are the info, right? These transformers, like a, like the info they depict within this analogy by definition are in fact dead, seeing that they're, they're only machines. As I aforementioned, they're dead. They're machines, yes, they, they appear to come to life. They appear to transform into something and come to life. But the fact of the matter is they're dead. Amen? You know, and the, the life that they appear to have is only due to their program. Because they're machines and machines have to be programmed. And so, you know, the life that you see that appears that they have is due to the program that they receive from their program. You know, nevertheless, even though they're dead, these machines or info has called many to take action. And the actions that stem from the Transformers info gave life to the Transformers info. Right. But without the original Transformers info, these actions would have never occurred, hence the info being depicted as the Transformers are as water. And your resulting actions are the marine life. Mm -hmm. And how you responded or acted to the info being depicted as Transformers depict whether you brought forth clean or unclean fish or marine life. Everybody still with me? Yes. How you responded or acted, how you responded to or acted from the info was predicated upon how you perceived the Transformers info, which is in turn dependent upon what light you view the Transformers info in. You know, if you looked at something and you, and you only halfway understood it, you're gonna act one way. But if you look at something and you fully understand it, you may act a totally different way. Because it's dependent upon your perception of the info that will determine how you're gonna act or not act to it. Amen? You know, if you, if you were totally convinced and understood that something was a lie, you, you would act one way. Right. You was totally convinced and, and understood that something was the truth, then you'll act another way. Yes. Are you right with me? Yes. Yeah. It's not until day five that one truly understands that Yah's love, faith, and hope is the source of all life in the universe. Not just the grass, the herbs, and the trees. That is not just ministry. 
but the entire universe. See, we have in day five, you truly understand that y'all's love, faith, and hope that all life is sourced mm -hmm. via Yah. See, a lot of people, they compartmentalize different aspects of life. You know, so when it comes to church and 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 religion and yah stuff, as as they may view it, you know, they compartmentalize that, you know, as you know, part of ministry or part of yah's overall ministry, and it's obvious to them that yah is behind that, right? Yes. See, but. When you get to a day five stage of development, you understand that not just ministry, but all aspects of life, everything that's in the world, everything that's living, that truly has life, is sourced from Yah. And so you begin to look at things a whole lot different because you begin to realize your football coach, Yeah, he was sourced from Yah. You know, you begin to realize, you know, that you're going to college. Yah is in that too. You begin to realize that there's nothing in your life or in anyone's life that don't lead back to Yah some, some type of way. Amen? Amen. You know, but prior to day five, people don't really have that understanding. You know, they, they know, okay, church stuff is church stuff. And it's kind of set apart over here, you know. But it doesn't apply to the rest of their life. So they're, they're usually happy heathens, you know, on days one through six. And then day seven, they try to be a saint. Say a lot. So understanding this, they begin to reflect more and more upon their experiences, as well as the other miscellaneous info that make up their seeds of memory which in turn leads them to take action all the more, thereby bringing forth more and more marine life. Because marine life is are those actions. You know, when we recognize, acknowledge, and understand that this marine life, i.e. our actions, are in correlation to our perception, and that our perceptions are in direct correlation to the light or light within our firmament, or our heaven, then we'll be in a position to choose the type of marine life we bring forth. You know, now take note that I said, when we recognize, acknowledge, and understand that this marine life, that is our actions are in correlation to our perception and that our perceptions are in direct correlation to the light or light. Because there's different types of light. There's two, there's two sources of light in the earth two sources you know and it depends on which light that's in our firmament that we're going to be choosing to look at things with are we going to shine one type or the other type you follow me yes. to exemplify this we'll continue to use the transformer analogy since the time that the transformers have manifested within our earth Many have coerced, many have been coerced to take action and dependent on how one acted or responded, i.e. whether it was in unison with Yah's will, way, and purposes or in unison with the God of this world's will, way, and purposes determine what type of marine life came forth. For example, some folks' actions brought forth marine life like this. Mm -hmm. You know, now this is an unclean type of marine life. You know, and it's depicted as being uh, it's a predatory by nature and de depicted as uh, unclean and even mankind is on this menu sometimes. <laughs> you know, I don't think you want to bring forth some type of marine life that may eat you. Right. Amen? Amen. But this is what some of us are doing. 
you know? So, you know, we have to consider these things because this is a big part of our spiritual development is actually thinking, you know? We take the info and we reflect upon it, you know? And those reflections causes us to act and those acts become a type of marine life. And if they become something like this, then it may come back to bite you later on. Mm -hmm. Instead, you want to bring forth marine life such as the striper fish. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have to, you don't, not only don't you have to worry about it eating you or coming back to bite you, you can actually eat it. Mm -hmm. And it can be sustaining to you. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> which would you rather bring forth? in these within your world unclean marine life like this or clean marine life like this regardless of what type of marine life one brought forth from the transformers info via their past actions whether it was clean or unclean fish or marine life it's important to note that it was centered about their perceptions it was centered about their perceptions of the transformers info and those perceptions were based upon whatever light or light they were viewing the Transformers info in. You know, some people viewed it in one light, other people viewed it in another light. Some combination of the two. Hence, it is imperative we understand that there are different sources of light that exist in the earth, as well as what light or light we view things from. Which light are you viewing things from? During day five, one has become mindful of the source of the light in which one perceives things. Yah's lights are the sun, moon, and stars, which speaks to his love, our faith in him, and our hope, you know, that, that from what we read about with his saints and the things that he's done in their lives and hope that he'll do likewise in ours. But what about the other lights of this world, such as light emitted via TVs, radios, phones, tablets, computers, and bulbs. What's the source of these lights? Let us consider 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, for it gives us the answer. Let me have my first reader read 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, please. Perception of false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Messiah. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Hallelujah. Okay, so one of the first things I want to point out. Verse 13 said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers. First of all, what was the job of the apostles? Spread the gospel. Spread the gospel. Yeah. Absolutely. And what is the gospel? Absolutely. But what is the gospel? Um, good news. The gospel means good news. Amen? All right. Now I want you to think about the transformers. And I want you to think about false apostles. See, because True apostles bring good news. False apostles brings news that may sound good, but isn't. Right. Amen? Amen? You know, true apostles have the spirit of truth. You know, because the comforter is the spirit of truth. False apostles have the spirit of deceit. And hence we see deceitful workers. You know, now it says that these false apostles and these deceitful workers who are in fact dead, they are dead. This is why Yahshua would say, let the dead bury the dead. Because there are those, those without Yah are dead. 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 Amen. Okay, now we have some these things that are dead transforming. See, they had transformers even back then transforming themselves into apostles of Messiah. 
So you have something that's dead transforming it itself into something and giving it the appearance that it has life. Verse 14 says, no marvel. Remember who published um, the, uh, the comic strip Transformers? It was Marvel. But here scripture is telling us no marvel. Don't be surprised. Because marvel means to be surprised. But Yah says no marvel. Mm -mm, don't marvel. Don't be surprised. For Satan himself is a transformer. And he transforms himself into an angel of light. Right. See, this is the type of light that folks are looking at these things through. And this is why they're getting the perception that they're getting. And this is why they're taking the actions that they are taking and bringing forth fish such as this. No marvel. We're not going to be surprised. Because we're supposed, we know, we, we have truth, we have light. It tells us Satan himself is a transformer. He transforms himself into an angel of light. Verse 15 told us, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Right. See, what I'm trying to get you to see is that there's two sources of light. Right. They're both going to appear. To bring you good news. They're both going to appear. To be about life. And righteousness. But one. Is true and sincere. And the other. Is a transformer. Right. Hereby we not only learn. Who's the source of the world's lights. Which will always illuminate the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Yeah. This is how you can always tell what light you're looking at things from. Because it will always illuminate the lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Mm -hmm. But we also learn here who's the father of the transformers. And it is none other than Satan, the god of this world. Mm -hmm. Say loud. Yoke 9, 1st Yoke 9, 2, 16 says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. You know, so when you see, all you got to do is filter these things. Filter, look at this light, and if you see the light, if you see within the light, if you can see a lust of the flesh, if you can see a lust of the eyes, if you can see the pride of life, Prepare forth, then you know it's not of the Father, but of the world. Right. And if it's of the world, then you know who's controlling it, even the God of this world. Right. Asatana. When we make our perceptions based upon the lights of Satan, such as the Transformers, then said perceptions will bring forth unclean actions or marine life that may come back to bite you one day. Therefore, I encourage you to make your perceptions based upon light emitted from Yah, i.e. the sun, the moon, and the star that is love, faith, and hope. Whenever one thoroughly reflect or consider their, their fish, that is their actions, it's going to bring about thoughts or, or rationalizations and or learnings of one sort or another. It's these rationalizations, these learnings, i.e. the gains or conclusions from these reflections and considerations that stem uh, from reflecting um, and considering our fish or actions that are being depicted as the files of the air. You know, so it's when you reflect and consider the rational, the resulting rationalizations or learnings, that is the re resulting gains or conclusions are what's being depicted as the files of the air. You know, once you get finished considering a matter and reflecting upon a matter, you know, you should come to some type of conclusion. And that conclusion is a type of file of the air. Now, the gains or conclusions resulting from our reflections or considerations are depicted as birds because they are only found in our heavens. They fly about and nest in our high places, such as mountains and trees. That is within our inner selves. Remember, 
In scripture, the higher you go up, the further you go in. You know, so the scripture speaks of the heavens is speaking of not, it's speaking of inward. When it speaks of upward, it's speaking of inward. When it speaks of downward, it's speaking of outward. You know, I, I told you guys this, you know, and I told you it was an important concept. I, I pray you remember this. You know, so the gains or conclusions resulting from our reflections and considerations are depicted as birds because they are only found in our heavens. They fly about nests in our high places, such as mountains and trees. That is within our inner selves. This is where you find them. Whereas our fish or actions live below or beyond our surface. Now, our actions depict fish. They live below or beyond our surface. Because once you act, it is, it lives beyond you, not just in you. You understand? You know, for instance, if, 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 if you take a look back here for a second, you know, if you see this action that I do, I take this and I take my tambourine and I drop it. Okay. Everyone could see that. That action can be taken from everyone. Everyone can see that because it's out, it's outside of me. And that's where actions live, outside of me. But who knows what I'm thinking right now? Who's no, who knows what I'm reflecting on at this moment? Only the Father in heaven. Because he's inside. Because the kingdom of heaven is within you. You understand? Yeah. You know, so the fish or your actions live below or beyond the surface. You know, but the birds, they live in the high places. They live in the heavens. They fly about the heavens. They live in, in the mountaintops and the treetops. Mm -hmm. And when these reflections or considerations are made in Yah's light, it results in clean birds or conclusions coming forth. But when they're made in the world's lights, such as the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, you know, which equates to what you see on the TVs, the computers, the laptops, the tablets, the phones, then it results in unclean birds. When you truly get these concepts down and begin to consciously and intentionally reflect or consider your actions within Yah's lights rather than the world's lights, that is the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, I'm trying to drill this in you because this is the light of the world. Your atmosphere will be a much better place and a safer place for your birds to live. Say la. So you want to get these things down. To exemplify this concept, we'll continue using the transformer analogy. Since the time the transformers manifested themselves upon our earth, many have been coerced into taking actions. Some actions they didn't mind taking, but others they really didn't want to take, but complied anyway. Such as not going outside their homes, such as not going outside their homes, hiding their identity by covering the mouth and nose all day, every day. Hiding out from the public for weeks at a time, not going near their loved ones to assure they don't get them in trouble, and even volunteering for injections of poisonous cocktails into Yah's complex ecosystem mm -hmm. without asking Yah and without knowing the effects thereof. Mm -hmm. Some due to unforeseen consequences, such as breaking out around the mouth and nose and breathing issues and from keeping, uh, from keeping them covered day in and day out suffering depression, anxiety, rage, paranoia, and even schizophrenia from too much isolation, as well as um, suffering issues with equilibrium, blood clotting, joint pain, heart issues, strokes, heart attacks, chest pains, etc., from introducing poisons into the system have begun to cause people to have second thoughts concerning their actions. Yes, many are now second guessing their previous decisions after seeing that some of those decisions are coming back to bite them. But unfortunately, most of those that are 
even taking it, that take that are, most of those that are even taking the time out to reflect upon or reconsider their marine life, that is their past actions concerning the transformers are still making these reflections or considerations via the perceptions of the light's world. They're still looking at things through the world's light, through the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And this is very unfortunate because the marine life that comes forth is dependent upon the light they use to perceive. And if they continue to use the wrong, the wrong light, they're going to continue to make the wrong actions or unclean actions. Say lie. Let us now consider a scriptural example of what it looks like to reflect and consider things from the world's lights. That is from the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eye. We have our next reader read Matthew Yahoo 4, 1 through 3, Matthew Yahoo 4, 5, and 6, and Matthew Yahoo 4, 8, and 9. Then was Yahshua, <clears throat> then was Yahua, no, not Yahshua, led up uh, of the Ruach, excuse me. Then was Yahua led up from the Ruach into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones to be, to be bread, made bread. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set of him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. And the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him the kingdom of the world and the glory of them, and such, and saith unto him, All things. All these things will I give thee, if thou will fall down and worship me. Hallelujah. Okay, so I want you to see what what the enemy, what House of Time was proposing. You know, um, you know, in Matthew four one through three, you know, where he came and tempted the Messiah after forty days and forty nights of, of fasting. You know, of course he knew he was hungry. And so he come and he say, if thou be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. You know, he know you haven't eaten in 40 days and 40 nights. He know you hungry. Surely he won't mind. You know, see, but if you have eyes to see, that you see, what you'll find is that the light that he's shining on is, it's actually a lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you see how it's concerned with his flesh? Yeah. 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 It's concerned with his with his physical hunger. Yeah. That is his flesh. And then in verses um, 5 and 6, it says, He set up him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the son of Elohim, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. You know, and for those who have eyes to see, you'll see the light that he's shining on this is simply the pride of life. The pride of life. You know, are you concerned with your life? Is Yah concerned with your life? You know, and verses eight and nine, it says, he show of him all the kingdoms of the world in the glory of them. And then he tell them, all these things will I give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Right. And if you have eyes to see, you'll see the light that he's shining on the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. It's simply the lust of the eyes. 
That's all it is. The lust of the eyes. He's showing them. He's showing them the glory of him. He's showing them the kings of the world and the glory of them to entice them, to mm -hmm. cause his eyes to lust. Right. Mm -hmm. See, these are his three lights. Just like Yah has three lights. Mm -hmm. The sun, the moon, and the stars, which represents his love, his faith, and his hope. These are Satan's three lights. What's the opposite of love? What's the opposite of love? Not scripturally speaking. Scripturally speaking, what's the opposite of love? Yah did not give you the spirit of fear, but of love. Amen? Fear. It's the opposite of love. You know, and this is how he comes at us with the pride of life. By filling us with fear. And our faith, you know, you know, he convinces us that it's just supposed to be belief. It's not supposed to have any actions attached to it. And our hope, he convinces us that, you know, God's not doing the same thing he was doing back in the day. So you can't hope for that stuff. You know, that's past. That's, that's, that's you know, he, he done with that. That's the light that most people are viewing things under. Not just the Transformers. But most of the things in their life. You know, what kind of effect is it going to have on my flesh? How is it going to affect, you know, my status in life? You know, is it going to help me get something I want? Say a lot. But that kind of thinking brings forth these type of birds. You know, unclean birds. But if one make their reflections or considerations within Yah's light, his sun, his moon, and his stars, you know, then one will bring forth clean birds, i.e. clean thoughts that will lead to clean conclusions or clean birds. And even if one has already brought forth unclean files concerning an action, one can choose to again reflect or consider the matter via Yah's light and bring forth clean birds or conclusions. So just because you brought forth some unclean birds, you can also bring forth clean fowls, clean birds, off of the same action. Amen? Amen? You know, and I would encourage you to do so. But what does it look like to reflect and consider an action within the lights of Elohim? And what type of birds or conclusions come from doing so? To exemplify this concept, let us consider Yahushua's responses to Satan's, um, to the temptations of Satan. You know, so again, we look at people where he says, command these stones to be made bread. Now we're going to see the light that Yahushua viewed it through. It says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. So in other words, he was telling them, yeah, even though my flesh is hungry, my spirit man is full and he'll pull me through. Mm -hmm. See, he realized, you know, even as we should realize that we have a heavenly as well as an earthly nature. Mm -hmm. And just because one of our, um, our spirit, one of our natures are hungry, don't mean the other one is. And even when you can't feed one, you can feed the other. Yeah, that's true. Amen. Yeah, amen. You know, and then concerning where he took um took him up, concerning where it says, cast thyself down, you know, for it is written, he shall give angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up as you any at any time thou shall put against a stone. He's 
he shot he shone some light on that too you know and he says it is written again thou shalt not tempt yahuwah thy elohim so again he said light from yah on this mm -hmm. and with the um final temptation where he said where he told him he'll give him all the things all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them you know, if you fall down and worship him, he says, For it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahuwah thy Elohim, and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. You know, now we see that in each case, Yahushua used light to perceive what was being said. And from that light, it causes him to act righteously. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Now, uh, just a small pop quiz. What kind of light did he use in each case? Yes, but um, but I'm looking for a light specifically. Sun, moon, or stars? Stars, I hear stars. Sun, moon, and stars.
All right? We good? She'll send you a picture. And, yeah, and you have my number and phone. All else fails, right? Yeah. All right, that's all I have for you today. Pray it was a blessing. Thank you,